Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Game Telecom video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things out with the next generation consoles. Both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Scarlet have had much speculation regarding their release date, with many anticipating at the very least Xbox Scarlet will launch this year. After all, Microsoft have promised multiple times now that they would have a big E3 showing. So at the very least, we're expecting some type of announcement concerning their plans for the next generation. But is there going to be a release of the consoles this year? Well, it looks like no, according to, to Kotaku writer Jason Schreier. He was talking on the Reset Era forums, and according to Jason, we will not see the consoles, both the PlayStation 5 as well as the Scarlet family, launch until the year 2020. There is some good news, though. Despite the systems not launching until fairly late, well, later than what we hoped anyway, the systems will be fairly capable in terms of performance, with over 10.7 teraflops of GPU performance promised. Look, as I've been saying since roughly March 2018 in this thread, next gen is coming in 2020. That semi-accurate article in 2018 got people's hopes up for 2019, but now I hope it's clear that the PS5 ain't coming this fall. And despite all the rumours about dev kits being out, usually from rumour mongers who are wrong more often than not, the number of people briefed on next gen is very limited. Even within companies like, say, DICE, there will be a small team of engineers who now have a rough idea of specs and anyone else and everyone else will know what they need to know. Not a lot of devs are disclosed on, what, on the next gen right now. In other words, don't expect much in the way of substantial leakage just yet. The only thing we know for now is that both Sony and Microsoft are aiming at higher than 10.7 teflops, number that Google threw out last week. And has been reported, Microsoft got a few things in the works. Adding a few pennies of my own thoughts to what Jason said there, and I can say that during my time at GDC 2019, several developers that I've spoken to, including rather large studios, had said that they probably know about as much of the next generation consoles as we do. They have not been formally briefed on the specifications, and at best, they'd heard rumours that they would be AMD based. And just to remind everyone, it does appear that both Sony and Microsoft will be using some variant of AMD hardware, although we don't know all of the specifics, including which of the two systems is going to be more powerful. We've heard supposed release specifications of the next generation Xbox, and it's going to be using a Navi-based GPU along with a Zen-based processor. But whether these specifications are even remotely accurate or not, we can only wait and see. And don't forget, teraflop to teraflop comparisons from one generation to another is not necessarily that useful. After all, you have other factors to take into consideration, including efficiencies in the architecture. So we'll just have to wait and see what the next generation of consoles actually brings to the table, unfortunately. If, on the other hand, you're more of a PC gamer and you're looking for a cheap graphics card, then we've got some good news. There have been a couple of leaks concerning NVIDIA's GTX 1650, and the performance of this card seems pretty decent. The results sit between the RX 570 and the GTX 1060 3GB. And from what we know about the performance of the card, it's going to be uh, featuring a 1.4GHz base clock and a boost clock of about 1.6 gigahertz, 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, of course, on a 128-bit bus, which is clocked at 2 gigahertz. From what we understand, the release date of the graphics cards will take place on April the 30th, and it's going to cost around 180 US dollars. So that is going to sit around 40 US dollars cheaper than the uh, GTX 1660. And now let's turn our attention to Rome, specifically one of the 64 core 128 thread processors, which will be aimed at the server market from AMD. While Threadripper and the Ryzen series of CPUs is very interesting for us as end users, in terms of market and profitability, the HPC slash server market is without question incredibly lucrative and it's not surprising that AMD are putting all of their efforts to try and jump into that as much as possible. So what have we learned regarding this entry that has popped up on the internets? So we have the CPU being identified as 
ZS1406E2VJUG5 underscore 22 slash 14. And what we have here, of course, is the bass and the turbo clock with the bass frequency of 1.4 gigahertz. To put this into some context, the EPIC 7601 contains 32 cores, 64 threads, and it has a base frequency of 2.2 GHz and boosts with just a couple of cores active to about 3.2 GHz. However, I believe if it has all of the cores active, it's more around the 2.7-ish GHz with the uh, turbo. However, the big change here is the level 3 cache. So for a start, you have double the amount of cores, but you also have double the amount of level 3 cache per CCX anyway. So we have 256 megabytes of level 3 cache total, which is quite astronomical. You might also recall that Lisa Sue at CS 2019 pitted two 28-core Xeon 8180 processors against the 64-core Epic Rome CPU. There was only one single Epic CPU against two of Intel's, and indeed, the Epic processor did win by around 20%. We also have information at the supercomputing conference which took place earlier this year with the High Performance Computing Center releasing information of its Hawk supercomputer and Rome processors there were listed as running up to 2.35 gigahertz. The CPU we see here is almost certainly a qualification sample, but you have to remember that there could be multiple versions of a 64-core processor, some of them having higher TDP. In other words, those CPUs would run at higher clock speed. Either way, it's interesting that we at least have further confirmation on some of the specifications of the chip, and it's quite interesting to look at the results, if nothing else. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, you can click the like button and you can also subscribe and make sure to click the bell icon so that YouTube really knows that you want to subscribe. Over the next day or so, there will be an interview with the motherboard division of MSI. That's all edited and is scheduled to be uploaded tomorrow. It's pretty darn interesting, at least in my opinion. It's pretty lengthy and it goes into details such as the design and creation of motherboards, the challenges, PCIe 4 implementation, and just a lot of other cool stuff. So if you want to check that out, be sure to check back tomorrow. With all of that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.